Hi all, in today's video I'm going to show you six hidden features in Yosemite and how to activate them. Some of them are just simply a checkbox in the system preferences area, but others are normally accessible only from the terminal. However, in today's video I'm going to show you how to turn on these features by using a simple freeware application called Deeper, which I'll give you a link in the comments area so you can download it and try it out yourself. And it will be able to allow you to turn it on and off as you feel you need it or as you want to change it. it they're fun features and especially the one that's running right now on my screen. I have the first one which is called an animated desktop background. Basically what I've done is I've taken my screensaver and made it my desktop picture. So I can actually work, as you can see, um, or even type in any text box while uh, this desktop background is playing. It's kind of cool and it kind of amazes your friends if they don't know how you did it. And it's uh, a feature that used to be available in the older operating systems, but it was hard to kind of turn it on and off because you needed to have uh, a terminal kind of understanding to do it. But in this case, you won't have to. It's a really cool feature of the application Deeper, and I'm going to show you how to use that in just a second. Another item I'm going to show you is turn on the dark menu bar and dock which is a new feature uh, in Yosemite. If you go to System Preferences and you look into the General, and here's the screen savers, but we'll go to the General area here. There is a feature called Use Dark Menu Bar and Dock. This is new, and a lot of people don't know it's up there. I started using it a couple of weeks ago, and I really like it, so I thought I'd show you guys how to, how to turn that on. Basically, look at my top bar here, and look at my dock. It's kind of white background on both. I'm going to check that, and now I've got this dark menu bar and the dark menu bar here, and I kind of like it. I actually found it a lot more uh, interesting to work in this area. It was kind of softer on my eyes, and I just kind of liked it. So you guys can try it out. Again, the way you do that is very simple. You go to Apple, System Preferences, go to the General tab, and click on Use Dark Menu Bar. Now you can uh, turn that on and off, as you can see, so it's not a big deal. So the animated desktop background, let's go back up to number one. How do you do that? Well, first you have to download this program called Deeper, and like I said, I will give you a link uh, to that in uh, my comments area. Once you download the application, you just grab it uh, from your downloads folder, open up your DMG file, which should show a desktop icon like this. Once you double click on it, it will go to your downloads folder first. Um, double click on it, open it up, and then drag the app from here to your Applications folder. That will load it into your Applications folder, then go into your Applications folder and open it up. When you first open up uh, the application, you will get a message that looks like uh, a, a username and password. Just put in your usual username and password for your computer. It's just asking for access to read through it. Once you do that, uh, you'll get, uh, it'll go through kind of a sync uh, to look through your system to see what's available for it. And once it finishes, you'll see a bar just like this. At this point, click on the general bar. And if you take a look, uh, this is how I did it. Uh, animate desktop background. So here you can see you have a choice of flurry or arabesque or the iTunes artwork. These are all the ones that I have loaded uh, in the uh, background uh, images for uh, screensaver. If you have more, those will be the ones listed. So let's switch it to arabesque. And as you can see, it's loading it. And you can take a look at the background, how it's now changed to the other background here. And obviously, I've already had it turned on, right? So there you go. You could see the difference of the background. Um, I could simply stop it if I want to right here. So it's very easy. This is a free app. It makes this feature kind of cool. And you can either turn it on or turn it off as you feel you need. Um, I could go back to Flurry or I can simply hit stop, but I'll leave it on for now. The next one that I wanted to show you is changing the screen capture format. Now, I have a video on how to take screenshots, but basically if you hit the Shift, Command, Control, and the 4 key, you get this little cross here, and you can make a screenshot by clicking and dragging. That screenshot uh, is often shows up on your desktop. If I had hit the Control key, I would have gotten into memory, but if I hit Shift, Command, 4, um, and take a screenshot of this, um, it will put a screenshot on my desktop. There it is. 
Now, when that screenshot is on my desktop, it normally is in a PNG format, which is not always the most common format people want to use. We sometimes want to use a JPEG format. So there is an option to change it to any kind of format you want. If you want a TIFF, a PNG, which is what the default is, you can even make it into a PDF, which is pretty cool if that's uh, what your needs are. And you can switch them back and forth using this app. So I selected JPEG. It was originally PNG. And I simply uh, hit Apply afterwards. And that was it. That's all it took. So it wasn't all that difficult. Once, it, uh, once you set it, it just kind of uh, takes care of it in this application. And if you want to change it back, you simply open up this application and uh, turn it on and off based on what you want. In this case, it would be back to the PNG, which by default. And see, it gives me uh, that a relaunch uh, something, which is the system uh, UI server process, which we don't want to do right now. So I'm going to hit cancel because I actually want to leave it on uh, JPEG. But that's all that it will take. So it's very, very easy. Another item that I love in here is the number of recent items. So as you can see, we just did animated desktop. We did dark menu bar, change screen capture format. And now we can also set, um, we're going to do adjust the number of recents. So what does that mean? Um, if you've ever looked into an application, it shows you how many items you have opened uh, in, let's say, the past 10 items that you had. Well, it used to be that that's the maximum that you could do, but let's say you wanted to see the 20 most recent items. If you click on that, it will change it, and it will remember the last 20 items that you have done. I don't know if there is a limitation here, but uh, you can take a look at that and see if that works for you. Uh, there's also a, how many places that you've gone to save. They have it set to 5. You can go all the way to 10. There you go, and then you just hit apply. But I think the apply is just for the 20, but I just hit it again to make sure. Um, actually, it's for the recent items, so that one just seems to be automatic. Uh, so that's really uh, a little cool feature. If you are somebody who does a lot of revisions and you know always likes to know where everything is, that's a good place to start. So now we're going to do for automatic updates. Over here, um, you can. Set, it's right now set by default to every seven days, but maybe. I want it to check every day for updates. And now it's going to change that as well. So that works out beautifully. Uh, you can now get uh, updates on the applications in the App Store um, every day for it to check for uh, any updates instead of uh, waiting for it. So that is another feature. So now we've done how often to check for updates. And we also did adjust the number of reasons. We have number five left which is how to remove the system preference pane. Well, this can be quite important if you end up having um, a preference coming up in the system preferences, one of these panes that you don't want anymore. So let's say I wanted to remove uh, this network link conditioner, which maybe I don't know what it does, or maybe I know what it does and I don't want it anymore. Well, the way you do that is you hold down the control key and you click on it, and you click remove network link preference pane. This will work for anything. I don't recommend you do it if you're not sure um, what you're doing. Kind of do some research before you delete it. But if you did install a preference pane that you don't want anymore, basically a preference pane that's becoming a pane, you may want to have it uh, deleted. Uh, so what I would do is, again, you simply put your cursor over it, you hold the control key, and you kick, uh, click and uh, hit network link condition of preference pane, remove it. So that's how you can remove it. There are other ways of removing it, but it was just a quick way if something shows up there and you need to remove it. And in this case, Network Link Conditioner actually got installed by the application Deeper, and they recommend that you remove it in that way, so I thought I would show you. Well, those are my six uh, hidden features of Yosemite. There's lots more. And what's very cool about this application is if you go to the Finder, you're going to find a whole new set of items that you can turn on and off. Uh, Try them, see what you like. Uh, the notification center, a lot of people are annoyed with that. So you could turn that on and off. You know, those are the windows that are popping up. There's extras menu uh, where you can put uh, some of these menu items uh, on your menu area, which is up here. Um, you can also uh, have some options for the dock um, where the position is. If you ever have your position of your dock is in different places, I'm not going to do that now because it'll stop everything. <laughs> Only show open applications, 
There's so many of these hidden features. There's ones for Safari. Um, if you read through these, you'll also see that there's some debug menus you can turn on. There's some hidden features in iTunes where you can uh, automatically play songs, which I think could be kind of cool if uh, you're running, you know, a Mac for some other purpose. Um, I like this one. This is the login window. It has a feature to uh, put in your own uh, login message, which can be really cool. Um, you have some turn off and on, shut down, and log out menu items here. And you could hide the sleep, restart, and shut down menus. Again, all you have to do is just check these boxes, and they change uh, those items. Uh, here's the mission control ones. Show Windows Preview in full size. That might be some helpful uh, ability if you're setting up something in like a museum and you want them to see a full uh, preview of something. That could be cool. Uh, here is the miscellaneous one. And uh, the verified disk image is kind of funny. Most people would say, oh, I would never turn that off. I would. I hate when it, every time I load something, it verifies my disk image. But the really important thing is if you have a disk image that's really large that you know is okay, you may want to just turn it off when you pop it in so you don't have to go through the verify. And it only takes a minute once this application is loaded. Uh, so there's some miscellaneous application. Uh, show Apple menu, desktop debug menu, uh, show photo booth debug menu. So these are debug menus that you can turn on and off. Force airdrop to be turned on always so that it's always on. So there are a lot of uh, these different hidden features. And the best part of it is you can always click restore to default. If you went crazy and you're like, oh, I don't know what I changed and something's not working right. Just open this up and restore to the defaults. Uh, Auto play for QuickTime player is also kind of cool. If you want to pop in um, a movie, um, you know, and have it automatically play, uh, this could be uh, a feature that you might like to have. Depends on what you're using your Mac for at the time. You know, for a presentation, this may be very helpful. So you've learned about a little application called Deeper. You've learned six of my favorite hidden features and you've learned about how to turn on a whole bunch more. So hope you enjoyed the video. And again, the link for this will be uh, set in my comments area. So you can download it for free. It's no cost and uh, no hidden costs either. It's, it, this is all available immediately. And uh, if you like the video, please like it and subscribe to my channel for more Mac tips in the future. Thanks for listening.